Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy, and this is the second part of our Creating Graphic Novel tutorial. In this section, I'm going to go over how to use Tunit to create the graphic novel effect. We're going to talk about how to create the background and what settings to apply to the foreground. Now, as you might re recall from the last portion of the tutorial, we have two separate elements here. We have our background, and then we have our pixie. And we're going to cartoon those separately. And the first thing I'm going to start off with is the foreground. I'm going to start off with my pixie here. And we're going to cartoon her. So I'm going to select that layer and go up to filter and go to digital anarchy and go to tune it. And I'm going to grab a preset that I've already saved out for my foreground. And then let's talk about it. Now, the first thing to know about Tunit generally is that to accurately see what the effect is going to create, you need to be zoomed in to 100%. Tunit will create a different effect based on the resolution of the image. So if you have a very small image, you'll get a different result than if you have a very high resolution image. And especially with high resolution images, you want to be zoomed in to 100%. That will allow you to accurately see what effect Tunit will have. And this becomes very noticeable with fine lines and stuff like that. So there are multiple styles within Tunit. Uh, of course, you have many different presets that you can select from. But you also have different styles here, flat shaded, flat detailed, all sorts of different things. Uh, for cartoon or graphic novel look, flat shaded or flat detailed are probably the best options. Flat shaded is really going to give you more of a comic book type of look, whereas flat detail will give you a little bit more detail. I can switch to flat detail and show you what that looks like. But for this, I really want to have a flatter look, so I'm going to go with flat shaded. That gives me a slightly more posterized type of look. And one of the key things about having detail in your image is your outlines. So let's switch to the outline section. And let's turn off the outlines to show you what it looks like without it. And you can see that that's not a great look. So we really want to have outlines on. That's really going to define the shapes, the areas, and the subject matter that we have. So I'm going to turn that back on. And you can see we have a variety of different options down here. Uh, the thickness is pretty self-explanatory. The larger this is, the thicker the lines are going to be. And that's not very good. In this case, we really want to have thinner lines. And so one is the appropriate setting. Now, this is really where being zoomed in to 100% makes a difference. Because if I zoom out to, say, 50% or 25%, you're not really going to see any difference between a thickness of 1 and 2 or 1 and 4. To see that kind of difference, you really need to be zoomed in to 100%. Now, we also have sensitivity and strength. And these two are somewhat interchangeable. You can get the same effects with different settings for each of these. Basically, it tells Tunit how many lines and how strong you want them to be. So if we start scaling this down, we have a lot fewer lines and they're not as consistent. They're a little bit broken up. But if we start cranking these values up, you can see that we start getting back to what we had. And so we can keep cranking those up until we find something we're happy with. I'm not super happy with that. So let's scale these back down to my original values, which was around uh, mid 60s and mid 50s. And so that gives us a much better look. We have a lot of detail in her garments here, a little bit of detail on the face, but not too much. Now, of course, you can really crank this up and get all sorts of weird effects. So if we really crank the sensitivity up here, we can get sort of old witch type of look. But that's not really what I'm going for. We kind of want to keep her looking on the younger, nicer side. And so those are the settings that we're going to go with. Now, one other really important aspect to tune it generally is the blurring. In this case, we have broken it up so that the outlines are blurred separately than the main effect, than the cartoon effect. And the way this works is that the blurs basically control how much posterization is happening on the cartoon effect. 
And we can better see this if I turn off the outlines. Radius doesn't have so much of an effect on the cartoon effect, but threshold does have a large effect, so we'll crank that up and show you what that looks like. And then we can crank it down and see what that looks like. And you can see with threshold cranked down, you get a lot more detail. If I increase it, you get much more smoother areas. Uh, usually somewhere in the middle is best. But again, for the main tunit effect, uh, the threshold makes the big difference. And when we come back to outlines, we can turn outlines on. And in fact, we can have it so there's only outlines. And so now let's take a look and see what happens with the blur when I make changes to that. So if I increase the radius, again, I'm increasing the blur, and I would expect to see fewer outlines. And that is certainly the case here. And same thing with threshold. Again, I'm increasing the blur. And so the outline algorithm is going to see a lot less detail. And if I scale all this stuff way down, and turn the blur off, actually, you're going to see lots of detail. And so again, somewhere in the middle is probably what we want. Maybe even a little bit less. And now we can turn the cartoon effect back on and see what we have. So that looks pretty good. Again, the blur works in conjunction with the sensitivity and strength and create the overall effect. And so now that I have this set up the way I want, I can click OK. And that's going to take us back to Photoshop. And so that's great. We've got our mad defending pixie all cartooned out. And now let's take a look and play around with the background. So I'll select that in my Layers palette and go back into Tunit. Now the thing to know about the background is that we want to have less detail there. We're not as interested in seeing all the detail in the background. And so I'll come down here and load up my preset for the background. Now this is again a great example of the difference when you zoom in versus zoomed out. So I'm sitting here basically with a 25% zoom and you can see all this detail that we have in the trees. Well let's go ahead and zoom in. And remember what this looks like. And once we get to 100, it's going to look a lot different. All that detail went away. So we want some detail, of course. But since it's the background, we want to have a lot less detail on the background than on the foreground. And so this is actually pretty good. And you can see that mostly I've made use of the blur again. So if we look at our outlines, the sensitivity and strength are actually a little bit higher. And that's why you see so much detail at the lower resolution version of it. But at the higher resolution, if I look at my blurs, you can see the threshold is really cranked up on this. And that's really giving a softer look to our forest scene here. And so when I go ahead and save that out, by clicking OK, and we'll scoot the interface up here so you can actually see the OK button. And you can see that the trees have some detail, but nowhere near as much detail as our foreground subject. And so that really makes her pop out. The viewer is really going to be focused on her and not looking in the trees for patterns or something interesting back there because there is nothing back there. Everything that's happening in the scene is with her. And so we really want the viewer to be focused just on her. And having the background softer and with less detail accomplishes that. So that's great. We've got the amount, proper amount of detail for the foreground and the background. And now we need to do some compositing. Now you may notice that our pixie here, while she looks great, doesn't really fit in with the scene. She's got sort of a bluish coloration to her. Obviously, the lights that we shot her with are different than the lighting in the forest, which was, of course, natural light, so it's a much more warmer light. And so what I'm going to do is select my pixie layer. And so we're going to go up to Image Adjustment and select Photo Filter. 
And we're gonna apply a warming filter to our Pixie. Let's select warming filter 81 here. We're gonna crank the density up. And you can see that's gonna colorize her a little bit and really make her blend in better with the background. Really makes her look like more part of the scene. And we'll click OK. And we can see the difference here. Very blue versus very warm. And it looks much better. And so I'm gonna scoot this up a little bit so you can see the bottom. And we're gonna move our pixie a little bit. And you can see the last thing that I've done is added in a drop shadow. Now these don't work like normal drop shadows. What you have to do is basically duplicate your pixie layer here. I'm gonna pop open my uh, layers palette a little bit more. And I'm gonna duplicate this layer. And put it behind the pixie. And we're gonna distort this by going to edit, transform, distort. And we can see what this looks like. And you might be wondering, how is this going to create an effective drop shadow? Well, it actually does a great job of it. Because what we're gonna do is select that, but we're gonna go up to image, hue and saturation and make that completely black. We are then going to grab a blur and Gaussian blur that out really high amount so that it's really blurred out. And then we're gonna go ahead and adjust the opacity of that so that some of the ground shows through. And actually we have multiple shadows here so we don't need both of those going on. So I just want the one shadow there. And of course we can move that around as we see fit and make it blend in with the scene even better. So that looks good. And so that's pretty much it for creating the scene with our pixie and her background and the shadow and really compositing her in there. Now you could take a little bit more time and perfect that shadow, but overall I think it looks pretty good. We've got a nice soft background, a very detailed foreground subject that's been warmed up and looks like she fits in with the environment that she's in. And then she has a little bit of a drop shadow. And so that's pretty much it for using Tunit to create a graphic novel. Now in the next section, I will go over using some of Photoshop's tools to create panels and then using our free plugin called Cartoon Bubble to actually add in thought bubbles and speaker bubbles and stuff like that. And really get into creating the uh, full page or panel set. So I hope you have enjoyed this and look for the next installment pretty shortly. And of course, all this stuff is available on digitalanarchy.com. You can download free demo versions of all these filters. There's of course lots more tutorials and all sorts of good stuff. So go over to digitalanarchy.com and check it out and see you in the next tutorial.